Hello everyone. October 2021 was the PRC's 70th anniversary. Many consider doomsday for the party to be fast approaching and its days are numbered. Today let's look at the October Revolution in Russia, the CCP's big brother. When Marxism was first established, mainstream and the traditional society regarded it as heresy and abnormal and was rejected. It began to take power when Lenin launched the October Revolution in Russia. After a successful rebellion, the Soviet Communist Party established a totalitarian system. Intellectuals who were eager to change the political status in China became excited. In the same way a person in the desert, about to die of thirst, suddenly saw the light of water two miles away. After the CCP's seizure of power in 1949, Mao said, The October Revolution sent us Marxism-Leninism with a bomb. However, the so-called October Revolution was, after all, a coup d'etat to overthrow the democratic regime and build a murderous pseudo-regime. As a result, it will never be legitimate. Therefore, the Communist Party under the Republic of China spread the word that the October Revolution was great and was the first triumphant socialist revolution in human history and established the first socialist state led by the proletariat. It was the first time that an unequal society of exploitation and oppression was eliminated and the first attempt was made to build a better society of fairness, justice and common prosperity and so on. The CCP emphasized this just to prove their legality in China. They shamelessly set November 7th as their anniversary day while in Yan'an. Chinese people are quite familiar with the Soviet Union movies Lenin in October and Lenin in 1918. The CCP made use of two propaganda movies to brainwash Chinese people into believing that the Russian people supported Lenin and the October Revolution. However, this movement did not improve the lives of the Russians, who abandoned communism in the end. The collapse of the Soviet Union left a bad reputation. What Chinese people did not expect was that after the fall of the Soviet Union, the Russians began to reflect, study and investigate its history. They finally concluded that the February Revolution was a democratic revolution, while the October Revolution was a counter-revolutionary coup, and many simply called Lenin a terrorist. These ideas not only were a topic of discussion, but have been included in Russian student textbooks. Now let's look at how the coup d'etat happened. The First World War occurred from 1914 to 1918, when Russia and Germany were rival belligerents. But from the beginning of the Great War, Lenin had hoped that Tsarist Russia would fail. Today he is considered to be a traitor. People like Lenin, with an evil nature, typically hope that there will be many riots all over the world. He often irritated people and conducted sabotage to gain an advantage. He was outlawed in Switzerland during World War I and at the time established the Revolution Group. As World War I progressed, Russia's power gradually depleted and the power of the Tsarist government became weakened. Many people, including liberals, socialists, merchants, militaries and aristocrats, all wanted to overthrow the Tsarist government. According to the Gregorian calendar, the February Revolution broke out in 1917. Western historians refer to the February Revolution as a democratic revolution. Why is it so defined? Because its greatest achievement was the overthrow of the Tsarist imperial system. It was equivalent to the Xinhai Revolution in China, which overthrew the imperial system of the Qing Dynasty and established the First Republic in Asia. But the February Democratic Revolution in Russia like the one in China, was eventually stolen by the evil Communist Party and it took less time to do so. This reveals the horror behind the Communist Party's growth. The Chinese Communist Party has been promoting only the October Revolution of its dead big brother, Soviet Union, for decades. Chinese people are unfamiliar with the February Revolution. The Second Russian Revolution took place in Russia on March 8, 1917. We will look at what happens during the First Revolution in a moment. This date was also based on the Gregorian calendar. Before the Second Russian Revolution, which took place in February of the Gregorian calendar, there was another revolution 12 years earlier in 1905. In 1904, after the Russia-Japanese War, 
Russia was at a disadvantage in the war between Japan and Russia over the division of the northeast of China and Korea. At that time, Russia was ruled by Tsar Nicholas II. He came to power during the turbulent times of war between the powers and the rise of various social forces. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Russia's anti-government forces were divided into the right-wing liberal 1905 Constitutional Democratic Party, which was formed by liberal intellectuals, the middle class, etc. They advocated a British-style constitutional monarchy in Russia, with politics dominated by parliament. It was considered to be a moderate reformist. In the Russian imperial state Duma, the so-called lower house, the house of representatives, the party opposed to both the Tsarist dictatorship and the social revolutionary program of the Social Democratic Labour Party and the Social Revolutionary Party, which, to be put simply, opposed the violent seizure of power. The Social Democratic Labour Party, which believed in Marxism, was the predecessor of the Russian Communist Party. It is needless to say that it is understood by all Chinese people, which is why it is called the left wing. Since they both wanted to overthrow the imperial system, the two parties unleashed a wide range of social unrest between 1905 and 1907 that was simply anti-government and had no clear objective, except for strikes, peasant protests, and even terrorist attacks and riots. The most serious conflict with the government began in December 1904 with a strike at the petrol factory in St. Petersburg, which festered and gradually climbed to 80,000 people. Early Sunday morning on January 22, 1905, which was January 9 on the Gregorian calendar, the Russian Orthodox archpriest, Father George Garvin, led a peaceful demonstration of some 30,000 workers in the square outside the Winter Palace to present a petition to the Tsar. He asked the Tsar for social reforms and an end to the Russo-Japanese war, and that workers should not work overtime, and that they should be treated reasonably. We will continue our story in the next episode. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Bye for now.